Learn the easy techniques to crochet, shape, and piece Fluffy the Poodle from beginning to end. Size to fit in the car, an airplane pocket, or a child's backpack, he's ready for play anywhere, anytime. Plus, he doesn't bark. And for poodle lovers everywhere, he makes a delightful and heartfelt Christmas or desk ornament. Whether you choose bright colors or a traditional doggy palette, his buggy eyes and pleasant smile will surely capture the hearts of many. He's simply adorable. The companion pattern is available by following the link in the description below. So let's begin this crochet adventure right now. So we're going to form a slip knot and chain two. One, two. In the second chain from the hook, we're going to insert our needle. However, we're going to take the yarn tail and wrap it around our hook so that we're actually going through the chain and under the yarn tail. And we're going to complete a single crochet. And we're going to do eight more single crochets so you have a total of nine single crochets in that same stitch. We're going to continue around this row and begin our spiral with a single crochet in each one of the stitches of the row below. The next four rounds combine decreases and increases to shape the paw. Make sure to work all shaping decreases under the front loops of the stitches below as this removes the bulk of the decrease. Work increases under both loops of the stitch below. Before we go on, we're going to take a little bit of stuffing and stuff that foot pretty solid. So now, once we have the nine, we're going to work even for six rows. Now, what I like to do at this point is look at my foot and see the shaping. And where I end it is basically the beginning of my row now. So I'm just moving this up to there. And then we're just going to slip stitch into the next stitch. So you're going to pull up a loop and chain one using the double strand. Then leave yourself enough of um, a yarn tail and then chain three. One, two, three. Then go into the next stitch and try and grab at least a little bit of extra. I grabbed two loops on this one here. And I'm just going to pull up a loop and do a single crochet, chain three. And you're just going around the leg. Now because it's a spiral, you have to kind of adjust because you want to keep it even. Once we have the first row on, you see how that's fluffy? You want to add a second row so that you get more of a puffy. As you finish your legs and you pair them up, you want to sew them along the center three stitches. So now we're ready to put the belly into place. So what we want to do is find the back set up of legs, face them forward away from you, and we're going to count and find the last stitch that was sewn together. And you can see that this was the stitch right there. So this one and this one are the connected stitches. So I'm going to go to the right hind leg. And that one's the connected one. One, two, three. Insert my hook from the inside of the leg to the front, pick up my yarn and just pull up a loop to join. I'm going to drop this one off and leave it off over on the edge. I'm going to chain one and go back into that same stitch and work a single crochet. So I'm going to work one single crochet in that stitch, one in the next stitch, and one in the third stitch. But when I get to the stitch that has the join in it, I'm going to insert my hook under both loops, pull up a loop tightly. Then I'm going to jump over to the other leg and in the same stitch that's joined, uh, the join stitch, I'm going to pull up a loop tightly. So I have three loops on hook, yarn over, and pull through all three. Now if this fuzz is getting in your way, the stuffing, just take it out of your way for now. Then I'm going to go back to my left leg and work one single crochet in each of the next three. 
So that gives me a total of three on this leg, one in the center, and three on that leg. That's seven stitches. And that just started the belly. So now I'm going to chain one and turn. I'm going to work one single crochet in each of the single crochets all the way across. So that's seven single crochets. Now when I get to this end, I'm going to chain one and turn. Now I'm going to work back again, but this time I'm going to insert my hook under both loops and do a single crochet two together and then one in each of the next three and then another single crochet two together, another decrease on this end. So I'm decreasing at the beginning and at the end. So now I only have five stitches along here. Chain one and turn. Work one single crochet in each stitch you cross. Continue to work even until row eight of the belly is completed. Align and center the back edge of the front pair of legs to the last row of the belly. Insert the hook through both thicknesses and slip stitch in each of the five stitches to join the belly to the front legs. This is what it looks like from underneath. And so we have the two front legs, the two back legs, and the belly. I'm going to mark the center stitch on the back end. Okay, so I'm going to chain one, one single crochet in each stitch around the fronts of the legs. When you get to the front join between the legs, you're going to treat it just like you did on the back legs. You're going to insert your hook, pull up a loop, and insert and pull up a loop in the next stitch. Yarn over and pull through all the stitches. Now I'm going to work one single crochet in each stitch until I get to the belly. I'm going to continue down the side of the belly right here. So I'm just going to work one single crochet in each of the edge stitches. Now I'm going to go around the back of the right hind leg. At this point I'm at the center back. So I'm going to continue to work a single crochet around each of the stitches of the back legs. And then one single crochet around each of the edge stitches along this side of the belly. And we're back to where we started. This is what it looks like from above. I'm going to mark that center back again. And so we're going to continue to build up this part of the body. Now count all the stitches in this row. I targeted 36. So after this row you want to have 38. So this is where you adjust. If you have too many stitches you just leave it alone or bring it down to 38. If you have less than 38 you bring it up to 38 by increasing and shaping, adding shaping to the back the buttocks of the um, to the dog butt. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but that's where you add it to add shaping. Okay, so now we are getting around the back of the dog, but he already has enough shaping back there, so I'm not going to worry about it. So we just completed row two because row the row always starts and ends right at the junction between the left front paw and the belly. On row three we're going to do two things. We're going to decrease on this side and decrease on this side. Just one, just to give it a little more shape. That brings in the belly a little bit more. Finished my row four, which is my work even row. I'm going to fold this in half right like this. I'm going to say one, two, three. This identifies the start of the center six at the back. At the front we're going to increase two and at the back we're going to decrease three. And that's because at the front of the body we're starting to shape the neck. And at the back of the body we're starting to shape the rump. And row six is just simply work even all the way around. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Pinch it in half, count back six from the back. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to put a marker in this stitch because we're going to do 
six rapid decreases and and it needs 12 stitches so I mark this half because that's where I start now I'm going to just work even until I get there row 8 is a little bit different yet I'm going to do two increases at the center front but at the back I'm going to do five decreases that means I have to identify the center back 10 stitches mark the 10 stitches at center back work even until you reach the marker so here we're going to put a stitch right here before our marker. We're just going to skip these 10 stitches, come over to this side, and continue to work even. And do you see how the neck has just been established? That's the back. So we're going to continue to work our stitches around this edge. Now that we've completed this first round of neck, what we're going to do is we're going to take our marker from the back here and this is now going to be our beginning of our row. And we're just marking that for now. And we're going to just work right around this even until we get one stitch before that marker. Okay, here's our marker. So there's our one stitch. And we are going to take a decrease right at the center back. So under the first loop, front loop, under the front loop of the next stitch, yarn over and pull through all three. So we've just decreased at the back of the neck. This is also our beginning of our row. So we're going to work to the front of row 10 and we're going to do an increase at the center front and a decrease at the center back. We're going to single crochet in each of the next four stitches. Then in the next stitch we're going to slip stitch under both loops and we're going to chain five. What that chain does is it allows us to skip over to this side and so we're going to jump over here and we're going to skip the next four stitches one two three four and we're going to slip stitch into this stitch right there that's a slip stitch and then we're going to work a single crochet in the next four and we have one more stitch before and here we're going to do a decrease. If you want to know what I just did here, we have this chain. That chain is just going to be pushed inside and made part of the stuffing. What we did was we built up this back of the neck and shaping the neck to lean forward. In the next two stitches we're going to work a single crochet in each of the next two. We're going to slip stitch in the third. We're going to chain five, skip over to the fourth single crochet from the end, and we're going to do a slip stitch there, one single crochet in the next two, and then one decrease at the back of the neck. All we're doing is doing what we did on the last row and we can cut our yarn. Leave yourself a, a good length. I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch to finish that off. Now I'm going to secure that end just like I did all my other ends and this is the time where you stuff the body and the neck firmly. Now do you see what you have? You have the shape of the angle of the head, the neckline is angling, and the back rump has been made. Form a slip knot and chain two to begin the head. Insert the hook in the second chain from the hook. Wrap the yarn around the hook as we did before and work eight single crochets into the chain and under the wrap. Mark the last stitch as the beginning of the round. This also marks the lower jaw. The opposite side is the front of the face. This information is important for shaping the head. We're going to work all the way over to the front of the face and we're going to work an increase in the front of the face. Now, as you know already, an increase is worked by doing two stitches in the same stitch. So, when we get here, we're going to work two 
stitches in that stitch. It doesn't matter whether you do it in this stitch or that stitch. It matters that you get it on that side because the shaping takes form. Anything else gives personality to the little creature. Okay, now we're back at the beginning of the rounds. That's why I marked it. Increase at the front of the face and at the lower jaw on rows 3, 6, 9, and 11. Rows 4, 5, 7, 8, and 10 are worked even. Before we go any further, I'm going to pull this yarn tail through to the front and the outside of the nose. Right through that center part right there. That's just so that I can weave it in later because I, it is not tight yet. Beautiful. Now we finish that round. See how his face shaped up really nice? Now, on row 12, we're going to work four increases evenly spaced. Increase that flares out the back of the head just a little bit. Now, we're going to work even one row. We are at the end of our round. Do you, so you see, if I flatten it out, you can see the shaping that we've been doing. And this is important. Now we start the decrease sequences. Now remember, when we do the decreases, we're going to do a single crocheted two together, but under the front loop only. That's one, two, three loops on hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Then we're going to work a single crochet under both loops. Then we're going to go back to doing a decrease. Pull up a loop in the front loop only, pull up another loop in the next front loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and then in the next stitch, insert under both loops and do a single crochet. And we're going to alternate the decrease and the single crochet until I have about eight stitches. Then I'm going to slip stitch under both loops of the next stitch and I'm going to break my yarn. That leaves me enough room to stuff the head and just draw it up. If I had worked all the way down to fewer stitches, it wouldn't be a flat back of the head. It would be pointy. And there I have the back of my head. All done, but I want you to see the shape of it. See how nice and flat? It's rounded slightly, and that's perfect. But do you see how the shape of the head and of course, this is the lower jaw, so this is where the eyeballs will go. And you need a little brow. That's why we increased four on that last round. Okay, so I'm just going to weave in these ends. We're going to form a slip knot, leaving about a six inch yarn tail. Then we're going to chain six. In the second chain from the hook, we're going to work a single crochet. And in each of the chains along the way. So that'll give us one, two, three, four, and five. Now, this I consider is the foundation row because I'm going to chain one and turn. Then I'm going to work one single crochet in each of the single crochets until the last single crochet in the row. In this one, I'm going to work two on that chain part and three more in the tip. That would be five altogether. That makes four. Here's my fifth one. And that's the last stitch on the row. Then I'm going to go and work under the base of the foundation row and work all the way up to the end of the row. What we now have is the ear, the basic ear, but, but we have to add fluff to the ear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch one stitch over just to reposition my hook and I'm going to start covering the stitches, I'm going to chain four to start. That is one that counts as a single crochet and three chains that are just the chains of the fluff. So then I'm going to insert my hook under an adjacent stitch, 
pull up a loop and complete a single crochet chain three and just like we did on the tail and on other parts of the body as you'll see I'm going to work around the next stitch with a single crochet chain three the object is to just flood the area with the fluff stitch this end at the beginning you do need to leave in place because we need that to attach it to the head later finished our head and we stuffed our body and now it's time to join and you saw that I left this yarn tail on the end of the head so I'm already closed down I look I left the marker on the head that's the lower jaw if you recall so I'm going to bring my yarn through the head from the back and I am simply going to stitch it to the body to the neck and you see how the angle of that we did on the body how it fits the head so nicely so that the little dog has the right confirmation you're going to leave about 10 to 12 inches of yarn and then you're going to form a slip knot and with the double strand of yarn you're going to chain eight now you can pull that yarn tail through that's fine doesn't really matter it's going to disappear very shortly anyway so once you have your chain eight with the double strand you're going to roll that chain over and expose the third loop on the back that's where you're going to be working across this entire row then with a single strand you're going to start in the second chain from the hook and slip stitch under that third loop and you're going to slip stitch under each of the stitches all the way to the end now you want to do it firmly because that difference between the two thicknesses of yarn and the one thickness of yarn will help the tail curve forward. Okay, once you get to the end, you're going to cut and leave yourself, oh, about a six to eight inch yarn tail. This yarn tail at the beginning yarn tail, that's at the tip, you're just gonna trim it off because that's gonna go away very shortly anyway. With sport weight yarn, slip stitch right at the tip of the tail and chain four. Work one single crochet, chain three, in an adjacent stitch to form the fluff stitch. Continue to work the chain three fluff stitch until a pom-pom is formed at the tip of the tail. With the tail curving forward, stitch it into place with the yarn tail. Then, using the same yarn tail, sew the opening on the back closed. With the yarn tails from the ears, stitch them into place. Mark the zones where you want to add the chain four fluff stitch. In this case, we are adding it to the top of his head and the chest and shoulder area. It is done the same way that the chain three fluff stitches worked, but it is a deeper pile. Simply attach the yarn and chain five. This represents a single crochet and chain four. Then work a single crochet chain four in an adjacent stitch in the zone and repeat until the zone is filled. Woof, 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 woof. The last thing to do is embroider the features. Buggy eyes, an exaggerated nose, a red smile will make your little character your very own. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please take a moment to subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications of upcoming videos and events. Happy crocheting!